All right, good afternoon and welcome um, to using Scrum Agile in remote development. So uh, hopefully a lot of Scrum fans and remote fans. Um, my name is Casper and uh, I've been working with uh, IT as a DevOps and a sales engineer for around 20 years. Uh, I've been working with open source for around 16 years. I've been building sites, uh, infrastructure, I've done sales and develop, uh, development training and so forth. And I've been into Drupal since 2009. I work for a company called X-Team. We're very discreet down here in the bottom. Uh, we are a 100% remote company. We don't have any offices at all. And we are 100% global. So I want to thank you for coming and uh, listening to uh, this little talk. I don't know how many were at the uh, previous uh, Scrum talk. Yeah, let's uh, let's keep fighting. <laughs> that was uh, that was fun. Uh, I brought an agenda, um, but I want to know how many of you uh, know and all work with Scrum today by a show of hands. Okay, great. <laughs> how many work remote? Oh, wow. Uh, those who didn't raise their hand there, who wants to work remote? <laughs> Everybody wants that. That's great. Fantastic. Um, um, I want to just create a, a simple baseline uh, where we all agree on what Scrum Agile is. Um, the ones who were at the uh, previous session will notice there's a, a few uh, different opinions about it. Um, what it is we need uh, out of Scrum for doing our remote work, what are the advantages and what are the drawbacks? Because I also want to uh, air some, not dirty laundry, <laughs> but uh, I want to make sure that you understand if you don't work remote or give you a big group hug and say we all share the same pains. Um, and then if we have some time at the end, we can look at uh, a few tools. And everything I will talk about is super opinionated, uh, opinionated uh, just so you know. So uh, please don't throw too many chairs or rotten fruit. Uh, one disclaimer I will make is if I use the phrase, it's easy or that's simple, uh, you may uh, storm up here and kick me or something. I will owe you all beers or something because that, that, that's a huge mistake. Uh, and for the purist, when I say Scrum, I mean Scrum Agile. So everybody is on the same page. So uh, what it is, the methodology, manifesto, the means to achieve greatness. I think if we try to break down the manifesto, we can see where we can add some uh, Scrum source. And uh, here we have it. Have you seen it before? Yeah. You can just shout out, no way. <laughs> individuals and interactions over processes and tools. Wow, organically grown teams of individuals. I think it sounds really, really good. Does someone disagree? I heard someone who worked in an agile company actually, no, I disagree with the manifesto. <laughs> Working software over comprehensive documentation. Delivery, ship. If it works, that's great. Although I think that uh, if we forget documentation altogether, uh, we are screwed. I said a bit lost. We are screwed. Customer collaboration over contract negotiation. Who wants to do all those pesky and boring uh, negotiations? We work together. I know everybody who talks about Scrum will say, meet up get together, we'll talk about it. Um, but we do need a contract. I think there needs to be a little bit of legalese. Uh, but, okay, a, a few of you were the, the, the previous session. I won't go too deep into it right now, but it's, it seems that sizing and scoping uh, is, a, is, is quite a pain in many organizations. And uh, is this gonna take three months or six months? And I have no idea. And time tracking, hours, billings, all that. I can understand that the customer collaboration precedes the contract negotiation. Because if we're bogged down in this boring bureau bureaucracy, we're taking away time from uh, making great products. 
but we can go into that. And of course, what I think is the most important thing is that we are responding to change over following a plan. And that's that sounds a little bit like uh, anarchy, but uh, for me, what I get out of it is let's get rid of the waterfall. It, it, it doesn't work. We have to iterate over things. So I know a, a project never starts perfect. Um, we, we do need to be adaptable. And, and Agile is for, for projects where we don't know exactly what the outcome will be. We know that there will be, let's say, a site and application or something. We don't know exactly because there's time and, and things will change uh, under, under the duration of that. There's also deadlines that are defined as we go along because who hasn't been in a project where suddenly you get, yeah, you know, that, uh, that uh, deployment uh, we have in three months, that's next week. That's putting a fine point to it. But things change uh, from upstairs. And, and we do need to adjust. See, in a, in a perfect world, every project starts out like this. It's all clearly defined. We know exactly what the product is. We know the responsibilities. That's for sure. Everybody is in place. We know the process. We know that when Joe hands it over to Emma and it goes to Tom, whatever, that's, that's, uh, that's clear as daylight for everyone. And we know how to measure it. We have our time tracking in hours. And also for prevention, we know exactly what to do when something goes wrong, right? Well. No, of course not. And the manifesto does not cover this. There is nothing. We have, we have to uh, define that ourselves. Or we can add some scrum sauce. I'm just... I, <laughs> there's, there was a, <laughs> a lot of hands up. So all of you know this, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know the backlog, the sprint backlog, all the other artifacts. Um, a team, a scrum master, a product owner. That's all totally clear. Right? Yep. Yeah. No one disagrees. And the ceremonies, we all have that. Stand up, grooming, retro, etc. Anyone does anything else? You have your measurements? I mentioned story points, burn downs, etc. So that's a great thing. That, that actually helps us in our day-to-day -day work. Um, but it's a framework. I don't think that too many who talk about Scrum actually mentions this. This is really, really important for me. It is something that we can add to. I won't say change, but we can, we can add to it. And if we're really, really good, we can, in fact, uh, also change it. Um, in a project I'm in right now, we have several different uh, backlogs. Um, that's not very scrummish, um, you could say, but it really helps us. There was a question about how do you do support in Scrum? Scrum doesn't cover support. Well, we have all our support in a different backlog. We have all our technical debt in a, in a different backlog. We have um, improvements that derive from the developers in a different uh, backlog. And that will then eventually make it into the sprint backlog. Um, the roles, we, we have, um, we have re release management also. That's not uh, a scrum role. We have QA. QA is a huge part of it. It's very, very important in our project, but it's not really um, a defined role in Scrum. And one of the last things we did was uh, to the ceremonies, we added uh, a developer checkpoint uh, because we, we <laughs> our stand-up uh, is a lot of people, all the stakeholders, all the uh, product owners. Um, it, it's, it's a large team, so we wanted something you don't talk tech on a stand-up. It's uh, what did you do yesterday, what are you doing today, and what are your impediments? 
and uh, the more technical stuff we have at a separate um, at a separate ceremony. But it is a ceremony; it's not a water cooler thing. So it is scheduled. Um, Scrum talks a lot about the team. Uh, we have the roles as the team. The other individual roles are the, the, the Scrum Master and the uh, product owner. Uh, and I like it, but a team is also made up of uh, individuals. And uh, that's where I see it really becoming very, very important when you're doing remote work. I will say again, we are 100% remote. We are not distributed. It's not like uh, an office in India or something like that that you hear about often. It is people spread out globally. Um, and everybody may have these, these challenges, but uh, I, I think that when we work remote, it becomes more apparent, much more apparent. And it is defining products and goals. And when you do it organically, you, you can't have corridor talks about this. You can't have informal sessions where you just sit around and talk about it. I was at another session where they talked a lot about, I think it was Tea Breaks, a UK company. I won't hang anybody to dry so they can come and slap me, but I'm, I'm, I, I disagree that you have to have all these meetings, 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 meetings. Um, especially when you work remote, you, can't, you, you have to define who, who, who are the product owners they will then do their job, the scrum master do their job, so that the developers can do their job. This is what I think signifies remote developers. Um, this only works if you've seen the movie. Um, so hopefully you have. Uh, anybody don't recognize this uh, guy? He was... Uh, a freedom fighter a long time ago. Braveheart. Braveheart. Um, I can I can go all violin and say I think uh, remote developers are a little bit of the r uh, freedom fighters in in uh, IT today. What I what I think remote developers um, tend to be like, especially the ones I work with, because those are almost the only ones I know is that they are extremely skilled and competent and both the generalists and the domain specialists it's 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 super high quality they are excellent communicators in any way and form and they are focused on work and not politics they are very able and eager to plan work themselves so the whole part about the self-managing team, it's not only the self-managing team, it's the self-managing developer. And they are curious and they are always looking to evolve and learn new stuff. Um, and one of the most important things uh, is that they are found globally. Who says that the best talent is in the city that you live in? There's absolutely no reason to think that. Today, people are spread all over the globe. But most importantly, I think that the best thing about remote developers is that they have a life outside of work. They have things they, they, they care for, are motivated by, that are not strictly work. But I will say, and I can say <laughs> in, in, in this assembly, it's not for everyone. It's definitely not for everyone. What does not signify remote developers? Um, this again only works if you've seen the movie. Um, this is the 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 the, the terrible uh, manager, the 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 project manager hovering over your desk. Uh, it's the symbol antithesis to remote work and freedom. Uh, where are those TPA reports? Well, go f yourself. Um, I don't need you to micromanage me all the time and you are bringing me out of my balance and you are interrupting me and you are making my work uh, bad. If you want 
the very very best talent to excel you need to get out of their way um But we do have something that helps us in Scrum to achieve that. There is, uh, of course, the freedom part. Um, I think a sprint is 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 like your space of freedom, um, and 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 that helps a lot. You can you can plan within your sprint. Um, for us, as a remote uh, company. Where, where the teams are spanning many uh, time zones, there are some assembly required. Um, and, and you have to be very, very adaptive. I, I, I won't go into it uh, right now. But I think that, again, you can see the freedom part is, is really, really important. It is necessary for people to be able to plan their work life and to plan their private life and have that balance. I think that the the people we see in X-Team are uh, absolute masters at that. Um, and it's not only on a daily basis. I mean, um, over time, you have live events happening. You have uh, moved to another city, uh, go traveling, start a family, whatever. But uh, what I think Scrum helps us is that um, if you look at the constant tracking of progress, the documentation is always updated and accessible for the team. It's not something extra, like time tracking, that goes beyond the the work. When when a developer checks in his code, it starts, well, in in most environments, it starts a whole host of uh, automated tasks that updates documentation and so on. So essentially, the do, uh, the developer is doing exactly the same. But all the, all the documentation, all the progress updates I, are done automatically. And if you work in Scrum, you will probably change, you will hopefully change the status of your ticket mm -hmm. to in progress and then it goes into uh, uh, QA or whatever your uh, process looks like, uh, what, what the different uh, swim lanes are you have in your, um, in your Scrum board. And I would I say depending on on the tool, uh, the 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 communication is on demand. I, uh, later on, I call it asynchronously. So if everybody uses Slack, who who uses Slack? Everybody knows Slack. Uh, the ones who doesn't use it uh, know it. It is very a asynchronously. You have your channels for discussing whatever technology or whatever topic it is uh, with your team and with the rest of the company, with the client even. And uh, you can post whatever you have to say uh, at, at any hour convenient to you, and then you get a response later or immediately. It's not like picking up the phone and expecting someone to be there at the other end at that exact time. And that really helps to relieve stress. I mean, that it, it's not for everybody, but I think that if you have the expectation of not getting uh, 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 the immediate response, uh, then it, it really can be a stress reliever. And, yeah, like I mentioned before, you have the freedom within, let's say, most work with two-week sprints. Well, within those two weeks, you know exactly what your workload is, uh, hopefully, and, um, and then you can plan out, okay, uh, I got this kind of ticket and I got this kind of ticket and this kind of ticket. Maybe I want to go to that thing on a Wednesday and I can do it on a Sunday. Whatever. No one no one should care. It's you as a developer who has to make sure that you plan uh, your work. Or some people work best at night. So why, why should you be, be enslaved and, and sitting at your desk uh, in that uh, nine to five uh, grind, that's that's insane. I don't I don't recall how many times I've driven home on a Friday afternoon. I thought, what are we? This is a previous life, um, and thought, oh my God, there it is on the car back home, and one and a half uh, one and a half hour commute, terrible. 
and then you s spend your Friday night getting that thing down that you spend all week trying to uh, to solve. Um, there's tools that help us uh, do all of this. Again, asterisk. There is nothing here that's easy uh, or simple, uh, but it's absolutely doable. That's for sure. And and when I when I say globally, I really mean globally. The last time, uh, uh, the the the. It's a couple of months ago. Uh, the team has been dissolved right now, um, but it was spread from Uruguay, Argentina, Brazil, Spain, Norway, myself in Sweden, uh, Russia, and I never can remember, was it Singapore, Kuala Lumpur, uh, somewhere out there. And then half the team was traveling all the time. So, so I mean, most Monday started wise, so w where in the world are you? Um, which was pretty cool, but it, it really works. And it's all these kinds of, it, it's different kind of developers, it's different kind of cultures, different kinds of backgrounds, and it's re it really works globally. And you can have one team. Because it is, what I believe is, it's very culturally agnostic. Um, when, when I move, I come from Denmark, so when I'm, anybody from Sweden? Okay, so. Listen, this is what's wrong with Sweden. Uh, <laughs> no one's here. So I moved to Sweden and got this uh, office job, and uh, it's nice, and uh, I won't say anything about it. Um, negative. Uh, 10.45, everybody got up and left their desk. And I was like, 10.45, what? what's going on? Well, they had this, uh, in the UK, it's a tea break, and in Sweden, it's fika. And it's like, you don't mess with it. It's it's as, as important as Christmas and and Midsummer all combined. In the morning, 10:45. It may be 10:30, but there's a, a little s bit of a civil war going on. Is it 10:30? Is it 10:45? You get up and you have coffee and some kind of cake. I was like, I I did not know this, but we're we're sitting here. We're we're discussing this. Yeah. Well, 10:45. We get up. I was never used to that. No of these, none of these fixed times. And it was the same with lunch. Yeah, Sweden get that bashing today. <laughs> uh, you could sit in a meeting and discussing the most important things. 12 o'clock, everybody got up and left the room. I was like, are you kidding me? Could, could you just wait like 15, 30 minutes more? No. So that was a culture that you would have to adapt to. Uh, I think that Scrum helps us uh, take away some of that uh, the, the, the cultural bias and, and helps us create a new culture. Yeah, it's not all it's not all uh, unicorns and uh, rainbows. There are some pitfalls. There are some assembly required. Um, all this freedom. It really requires you to be responsible. You have to manage yourself. Because you will, if you haven't worked in a remote company and you're looking to do it, you will find out no one is going to, to you know, uh, tap you on your shoulder and say, so what's going on? If you are not participating, if you're not showing the engagement, if you are not posting whatever kittens on Slack or whatever your company prefers, then uh, it will not work. There's a little bit of, uh, I think, loneliness is the word that uh, most people talk about. Um, and and if, if you come straight out of years and years in an office, it, it will probably seem lonely. And um, it's not only the developers, it's also the managers. Especially in Scrum, that doesn't mean, it, not only in, in remote, but also in... in, in in a located, geographically located uh, arrangement, the managers have to take a back seat. Uh, I, I, I don't know uh, how many managers can go from the traditional uh, role of, the, of, of managing uh, people uh, to just making sure that people are able to manage themselves. Um, 
what helps is all the reports like the burn down charts and uh, the daily stand ups that that can set the, some managers uh, hard at ease but uh, it's a challenge it it, it really is um, so so I would say there's there's a lot again like the manifesto it, it sounds good in in principle but in real life you really have to be uh, able to to uh, take on the responsibility another thing with uh, with uh, with scrum <laughs> uh, it has nothing to do with code and uh, many developers okay not this room but other developers who are not here <coughs> uh, <laughs> He seems to to have this notion that uh, now we get better quality uh, product, mm, but it, it yes, hopefully you will do that, but it doesn't tell you how. Um, this is where some of the assembly comes in, and there's tons of other frameworks that deals with uh, with uh, <coughs> with the uh, code quality. They're all uh, asterisk DD. Uh, go look at that, and that's uh, you can have a whole uh, con about that. It doesn't talk about deployment. It doesn't talk about um, what are all the operations, um, uh, operations-wise challenges you have, and and that can be uh, can be a, a challenge to someone, and especially the most importantly, the most importantly is that you 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 do Scrum and you do it right. I. Uh, there was this uh, water scrum in the previous session. I've, I've never heard about it before, but I've, it sounded like something I've been uh, exposed to. Um, <coughs> doing doing sprints in a in a in a Gantt chart. It's it, no, it, it it doesn't work. Um, when things go sour, uh, Scrum really doesn't have the perfect explanation, but it it's often a derivative of you haven't done it right like yes we want to do uh, scrum but we don't want uh, sprints or we do sprints ad hoc um, I'm, I'm sure some of you have have seen some some disastrous examples of this one of the things that also are a great pitfall is that when management support goes cold then it's really really hard to move forward it's it's essential that when you implement if if you do scrum everybody has to be on board and on board for the long haul lack of knowledge like uh, i said in the beginning uh, some manager said yeah we're an agile company but uh, i don't really care about the manifesto and then the guy who told this story said well this is the manifesto and the manager had to admit this was the first time we've ever seen it and I'm not saying that you have to wake up 3 a.m. and know the manifesto, but at least know some basics. Like with Scrum, if, if you have the basics in place and you actually adhere to it. And and different people will say, will focus on different things like the retro. The retro is the most important thing or, is, uh, or, or something else. The daily stand-ups. I think the daily stand-ups are among uh, some of the most important things. And then the lack of resources. The lack of resources is is what leads to uh, uh, incompetent people being scrum master just because we need someone yeah now you're the scrum master and you can be product <laughs> owner and you can be scrum owner and you can be I don't know prog master uh, bad implementation and and let's cut some corners a scrum master for instance is it is a full-time job it's actually more than a full-time job but uh, let's not pity all the scrum masters too much uh, product owners it's really hard you have to do it right especially when when you do it remote uh, you can't just write a ticket that says yeah go uh, go do this let's have that shiny spinner in place it, it, no there's a user story and there's acceptance criteria there's a lot of formal stuff and when you reach a level at around sprint 50, then we can talk about uh, you can scale it down. But it's it's essential, especially if if your if your time zones don't overlap that much. Uh, write that GD user story perfect the first time. 
It's really, really important. Um, one of the things I, I like to call Scrum, uh, any Irish? Hmm. Uh, I trusted the Google Translate, and it says that Scrum is a cheese. Um, Scrum needs to mature, and it needs to, uh, time to permeate through the organization. And it's not done just by saying, now we implement it. That, that's, that's not even the beginning. You have to do it for a while to, uh, to really do it right. And, and that especially um, is the case when you're doing it remote. I, here at the end, uh, want to talk a little bit about some tools. Um, what is really, really important um, is that you have good tools. Good, good tools means everything in uh, remote uh, work. Um, I hope you all know these, uh, these brands. Uh, they have their own uh, small uh, twerks and, and uh, specialties. Trello uh, is a Kanban tool, but it can, with some additional uh, modules, uh, be made into a sort of scrum uh, backlog, uh, sprint uh, backlog uh, tool. It, it, it manages it. You can add uh, story points and so on. It's not, it's not a super solution, but it's free. Uh, Atlassian's uh, product suite, on the other hand, is not free, uh, but it's very, very good. Uh, Basecamp, mm, yeah, well, for historic reasons. Uh, GitHub, if you uh, throw Waffle IO on it, uh, you can actually use yep. the uh, issues uh, pretty well. Um, story points and so on, uh, all the necessities are there. Um, it, it's different strokes and so on. Um, I want to say something about a co code repository. Um, I still meet uh, organizations that don't use a code repository. Uh, so whatever you do, um, use Git. So that is it. Um, you have these to choose from. You can use your own. Uh, it's open source. And uh, here are some of the uh, the other tools we use um, on our on our work for communicating uh, within the team and uh, with the customer. And of course, Slack. <laughs> Since I put this slide together, Slack seems to have uh, exploded even more. Uh, I'll keep Skype in as an honorable mention, just because it's made by a guy from Denmark and Sweden. Uh, Google Hangouts, um, when it works, it works really great. Um, <laughs> appearing uh, is a tool. Uh, join me, Google Docs, uh, there's tons of tools, and you can probably add uh, many more. but but you know, choose one and, and, and stick to it. And all these, especially with Slack, they have uh, so many integrations um, and there are so many other tools. So I kept it as short as possible and uh, skipped through a lot because uh, what I really liked in the last one is that uh, we have a dialogue and we have a discussion. And with so many remote workers, I, I didn't even think it was possible. So that's fantastic. I want to hear a lot about what you have to say. And I will take questions. And um, if you don't have a question right now, uh, find me, tap me on the shoulder, uh, knock me over. No, don't do that. Um, or Twitter or email. Um, and that's it for now. Any questions? Oh. Yes. And this time, use the mic and queue up there. And uh, I will answer anything. It would be interesting to know what a day in your company looks like and how big your scrum teams are and how you um, resolve the challenge of being on different time zones. Right. Yeah. Uh, as for a, a team uh, pulse, that's, uh, that's normally around the, the time when, when the scrum starts. So let me give you an example of the uh, of the team where I I was a am a team lead. Um, I live in Sweden, 
the customer is in uh, is on the west coast of the U.S. in uh, Los Angeles, so that's a nine-hour uh, time difference. My day starts around uh, six o'clock at night, and before that, you have uh, chats with various people uh, on, on on Slack, depending on where in the world they are. If they're in Europe, you can start uh, during the morning. Um, how's it going? How's that thing working out? And so on. Yeah, so you get up to the point, and, and the Southern European, uh, Southern uh, South American people uh, is up around two, three in the afternoon, and uh, then you have your first meeting around six, and then a few meetings the rest of the evening. Yeah, and so you're 24 seven. Mm, yeah, in periods. Yeah. How do you do the reviews? How do you do the reviews? I mean, everybody is in a different country, different time zones. Uh, do some have to wake up at three o'clock at night to be uh, at the review, or how do you handle it? We 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 had one guy who was in the, the far east, and yes, he worked uh, most uh, nights. Uh, another guy uh, in Poland just likes working at night, so he he starts you know late afternoon, early evening and works through the night and um, all all c ceremonies are, are remote of course yeah. um, and that's the stand-up yeah. actually we have also yeah. asynced <laughs> the stand-ups yeah. uh, so I think it's around two or three in the afternoon uh, there's a bot you know slack bots there's a slack bot that uh, kicks in and asks you the uh, questions yeah. and uh, if you, for some reason, uh, are not able to make it to the the the, um, the stand up in the evening, then you at least have posted that. Um, but sometimes it's just great to to have that report because then that's documented and you uh, get some some face or ear to mouth uh, time with the rest of the team uh, on the stand up. And the same with the 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 retro. Yep. The same with the grooming. Uh, we get worksheets uh, about what tickets are getting groomed, and then you can, you know, peace and in peace and quiet, just sit and uh, go through the tickets, and and score them yourself, and uh, then come. If you're not able to make it, it, again, it's an evening thing. If you're European, uh, then you can either just send off to the scrum master. Here's uh, my point suggestion, or uh, or you can participate and just, you know, read it off your notes. Um, and the same with the retro as well. Don't, don't you find that's causing it? We, we really need to uh, use the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, uh, I will never be allowed back. <laughs> okay. uh, you, um, I also work 100% remote um, as a scrum master. Yeah. And we work actually mornings. Um, and I just feel from what you've said, there's a lot of disconnect. Yes, we can all do our daily stand up individually in, and send it through Slack. But then there's no team. Mm -hmm. And like, so, so I make a point. I mean, yes, sometimes I, I, I had a project where, where they wanted the uh, Scrum Master in, in the States. Uh, I'm based in Israel. And it worked better that I, t I became the Scrum Master. So there will be a team, a unity. Yeah. You sound so disconnected. I mean, like you sound in some ways so disconnected from each other that you can just, you're all individually running Scrum. And doing your stand-up when you, you know, just before you go out, so you talk about the flexibility. It sounds to me like you're working all day. Well, uh, do you mean work all day concentrated? No, it, it is intermittent. I understand this. Like yeah, yeah. I, I work uh, uh, um, five, six hours in the morning, 7.30 till about 1. I have yeah. a massive break with my kids and then back on in the evening. Yeah. So, but that's, there is that break. Um, and and you, you know, there's many things actually that's come up. You talk about the flexibility, yeah. but sometimes it, it it does the opposite. It makes you work constantly. You're constantly you're on your phone. You're on your this. You're on you know you if you're at home, you just have to walk 100 meters and you get to your desk. So you you're like being pulled back all the time uh, on one hand, and on the other hand, you've got this disconnect because you know oh I can't make it today. Like I haven't made it for the week. I'll just update my stand-up notes, um, what I did, but where's the listening? Where's the listening to the team? You're disconnected. That the, I will say just on that, everybody gets each other's notes. But so everybody, you can read it. Everyone updates um, yeah. 
types that are so updated. The Slack bot will will uh, will um, uh, assemble all these and, and send it out as a as and a note. Course. So so now everybody can read what everybody is working on. But isn't kind of the beauty of Scrum? I'm kind of enthusiastic about Scrum as well. And um, the whole there's no team. I don't. I have a team, we're a unit, we're one, we go forward together, and that's because we speak every day, we're in communication on the project. Slack as well, but yeah. like, I, just, I just feel it's lacking that... Uh, so... The personal touch. Yeah. So, that's true. <laughs> I just want to emphasize that we have this flexibility. What is reality is that 99% always shows up for everything. The disconnect, I, I, I don't feel disconnected. I feel very connected to the team. The thing is, you, ha you, you have other means of uh, communicating. In Slack now, you can pick up the phone, you can have video conference, that's one-to-one. -one. You can have hangouts with the entire team where, where everybody <laughs> sees each other. Um, do we, we don't use the ceremonies as a point of, of creating the team. We have so many other activities, but that's as a company, oh, right. and also with the client, mm -hmm. uh, that is sort of extracurricular. So we are not driven by by what is is uh, the scrum ceremonies. Mm -hmm. That that should be derived. That we talk well together on on a stand up is derived from from uh, other communications that we have. Um, I, uh, I, I, I don't, I don't yeah, want to try okay. and be the arbitration between the two, <laughs> yeah. but I think you've both got really valid points, but we've also <laughs> got to look at the inclusivity around this. So you, you, you may have members of your team who can't hear or see in your stand-up, even if you're in the same office. There could be some people with disabilities who aren't able to perform in that particular way. So they're still able to take part. So a text version of a, of a stand-up meeting is fine yeah. for your team. Yeah. But ideally, yeah, you'd all be in the same place. But ideally, you'd be all, all co-located. Not ideally. Well, ideally for Scrum. And this is what you're saying. Scrum is, it doesn't dictate that, but it suggests that that is a better way of working. But it doesn't say that you can't work any other way. Exactly. So there's, there's no way of saying... I know there's a lot of descriptions about... Stand up. The, the the Scrum stand up is where we all meet daily. I know, but but meeting daily does that mean that it has to be? I know it it it's about to stand up. But we sit down most of the time if you don't have a desk. Yeah. But but it, it's not an, a a law, and and that's where I say I think that Scrum actually allows for this the way we do it. But again, I said there's a a, a whole lot of discipline. And uh, it's not for everybody. Mm -hmm. I mean, feeling the disconnect. I've, I've uh, I, <laughs> I almost started a sob story, but um, <laughs> I feel disconnected at a at a job I had once because I was the only one in the entire IT department working with web, and no one else understood because they work with <laughs> brace yourself Java. <laughs> And I was doing Drupal, and no one understood anything, and we, we could m meet maybe uh, at the coffee break that was mandatory. And I said, so what are you doing? Yeah, I, 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 I got this great optimization, uh, so I can uh, you know, do something with views much faster. It's like, huh? And uh, they were sitting with 25-year-old uh, technology that is re really sucks, you know, it's Java. <laughs> um, so there was no one there, and the project manager didn't even care about it. And he was sort of a, a scrum master as well. Very bad implementation. It, it, I'm just making the point that scrum can, uh, can, can also uh, have room for this way of, uh, of doing it. Um, I just wanted to say that I can identify with what you're saying about feeling a bit disconnected. And I found that the stand-ups were one way to connect the team on kind of a uh, cohesive like, we always do this, we always connect. And that always felt really good to the team. Like, there was a kind of camaraderie. And one of the other sessions that I saw during this PM track talked about how <coughs> people liked that, but that it wasn't um, particularly useful. And I had felt that on our projects, where it's just kind of, okay, now he's talking. Do I care? The scrum master cares. 
Mm. The project manager cares. The product owner cares because we're getting information that pertains to status and things we need to report and track and understand. But the rest of the team doesn't always tune in. And I'm wondering um, if anyone or you have suggestions of how we can turn that daily uh, stand-up round robin, whatever you want to call it, into something that's more focused on self-management um, and team generating usefulness? Like, is there uh, a list of questions that we can come up with that will be more informational to the team and not just the scrum master and project manager and product owner? Um, because otherwise, it's a great way to stay in touch and to keep the team cohesive. But it's not giving the entire team good information that they always want to know. If the designer has finished a comp that they need to work on, that's interesting. They need to know that. But if it's just them saying, oh, I'm gathering information, blah, 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 and yeah. you already know that because of one other meeting you've had, then it's wasted time, essentially. So I'm trying to find what's the balance but between wasting time and, or not wasting time and creating cohesiveness. Like, how can we find that middle ground? For me, for me, the stand-up, the daily stand-up is not the holy grail. Uh, actually, in another team, uh, same client, we are really discussing the meeting-free environment uh, doing everything asynchronously and keeping the stand-up down to a bare minimum. Uh, still have it every day. Sort of a, it's a bit sad because it's the old managerial way of doing it, just checking are people still awake uh, and so on. Um, <laughs> and maybe they know a joke or something. But it, it's really about, do you need to be unblocked? If not, move on to the next one. Who needs unblocking? Uh, uh, and and I would say, get get your uh, 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 team building in, in something in something else than the the, the ceremonies, the but retros. Question: Are you using chat or something like IRC, some other like Slack specifically, Slack. like really Slack. keep, in, keep Slack. in touch? Yeah. Slack so is. You're using is, that for your team development, like their cohesive growth as a team and like the forming storming business. That's done via chat instead of call, no. well, for example. Mm. As as a company, we do uh, a whole lot other uh, uh, other things that are uh, social. Uh, because it's a remote company, the the, the newest initiative is uh, creating. Uh, it's called X Outposts. So the company will rent a house, like in uh, the Canary Islands, for a month, a month and a half, and so on. And people can book in and and just meet. Maybe they work on different teams. But they can just uh, sit around the same table, do their work, and uh, whenever they feel like it, go out and surf. And um, next time it's in Thailand, and previously it was Naples. I've s I lost track because I have a family, so I can't do all this uh, all the same time. But we, we, we go to conferences together. Uh, there's a conference next um, uh, month. Um, we did at one time get the entire global team together in Los Angeles and uh, meet up for uh, for a week there. It was hugely uh, beneficial. We still have, you know, we, we, we talk about stuff going on there. It's it's outside the scrum ceremonies. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and I would say this, <laughs> it's very idealistic, but the ceremony should be something that you look forward to coming to. It's not, oh my God, now I have to break my work and 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 go do the stand up or the retro whatever the grooming um the meeting free environment that's that's really the goal uh we, we didn't quite achieve it on 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 that project uh we're looking forward to it on the the next yes um i have a question about when developers are blocked so let's say in my virtual stand up i say i'm blocked on this um, how, and then the people I'm blocked on may go to bed or have dinner or something. How, uh, do you have set windows of what's acceptable to wait for someone else to come help? Or is that worked out between the individuals? Because I previously was a remote person working three hours ahead of the rest right. of my team. And... Um, sometimes it was a whole lost day. Like I would try to find other things to do, but yeah. my main task I would be blocked on maybe till 4 p.m. my time. Wow. See, 
then, then, then you cannot rely on the stand-up. I would say uh, the 24-hour circle works fine in an office, but it doesn't work when you work remote, especially when you're spread out globally. If you if you if you're blocked, you cannot wait till the uh, to to the stand-up to say that you're blocked. You have to you have to raise that flag immediately. There's a lot of responsibility on the developers to be proactive, to to foresee these things. It, it there's there's a lot of pressure on the developers to 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 think ahead. You can't just oh oh I'm blocked so good night. It, no, it, that's you, what you, I was yeah. saying. Like I would say in my morning 9 a.m. I'm blocked, but then yeah. if everyone else doesn't come on till later, then like how do you coordinate that? Does it become the next person's first priority to unblock me because I've already been working for six or so hours? But you 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 do have an overlap around. Oh, okay. Uh, the stand-up time. Oh, I'm asking you. No, no, no. Like my oh. my stand-up was first. Like I would log on and say 9 a.m. my time. This is what I'm doing. Everyone else doesn't come on till three hours later, and then that's their morning. So they're they're and I'm saying they're doing their stand-up yeah. at my noon, and then they don't really get to address my blocker until what is now 4 p.m. my time because I'm ahead. Yeah, yeah. Well, you d you do have to get together around the same time, okay. because otherwise you're totally disconnected. I don't know if that's what you meant about the the disconnect on the team. There has to be, you know, like a common time. But you don't do it like it's not a, a social thing. We we do have to find out what what are the technical issues around the standoff. We do use it for, you know, notices if if someone is uh, entering the team or leaving the team, other practical <laughs> information. Uh, on the stand-up, which might as well be something that just goes out into the uh, in, into the daily uh, notes. So everything from from the stand-up is is collected in in notes and documented. Um, but yeah, <coughs> it 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 yep. it it varies around uh, the the blocking and unblocking. Um, but but you do have to adapt to it. That was a very yeah. <laughs> shitty answer. <laughs> so, um, yeah, a while ago, I was involved uh, a lot of with e-learning, and uh, and this one wa this was one of the biggest questions on e-learning. Like, do you do you do things asynchronously or synchronously? And there were there were even measures that we got in the end that didn't actually get us a conclusion if people learning <coughs> asynchronously would learn better or even faster than the ones that were actually having like proper classes with, uh, with the video one to many or one one yeah. yeah but they were all remote. So my question is, because this this <coughs> is like we we on when we are developing, we are learning with each other. We are getting things that the other just grabs and pick that up and unblock and stuff. So, what is your like? Did you ever try to measure that? Like, what is the best thing to do? The passing of stuff. Synchronously or asynchronously. My my experience is asynchronously works really fine. I I I think that when we have talks, we schedule it. Uh, let's let's do a one to one. Even even if it's very informal, actually, uh, let's talk in two hours. Um, something that doesn't interrupt your work. That that's really my biggest concern. That you, you that you 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 that you give the developers the freedom to organize their own work, and you don't bug them with with uh, things all the time. If they there's so many different uh, tools that can can help you, and and right. that 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 you you can adapt to your style. A tomato something. Where you work in these 25, Pomodoro. 25 Pomodoro. 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 That is <laughs> <laughs> tomato. Anyway, uh, that gives you these 25-minute blocks. 
That's one way of doing it. Uh, and then you uh, get up anyway. And then maybe you check your mail or check Slack. Is there something I need to to, to check? I, I'm a huge fan of uh, asynchronous uh, communication uh, because it works very, very well for me. And, and sometimes you just have to okay. be there. Uh, it, it, it depends. Yep. Uh, like I said, it's not for everyone. I understand that they are, they are something that uh, works better for you, your team. Um. Hi. Hi. Um, so we're an agency in central London. And central London is great, but uh, the rent is hell, the community yeah. is hell. Um, the remote works really well. Um, we have one re remote developer in the Ukraine, and today is actually the first time in the company history that we've all been in the same place. Yeah. However, mm -hmm. and this is the, um, the, the question really, I was wondering if you have an issue with clients, because we, we are an agency, so we're constantly dealing with clients. All, all of our clients want us in meetings. So the goal of a remote company would work well for us as a goal, but actually we still need to have a base in London. I was just wondering if you give any insight on, you know, if you are completely remote yeah. all over the world, where are your clients? Are they also all over the world? I think for us the biggest issue would be trying to convert them to a scrum type approach rather than, I mean, their government sector clients, so they're all waterfall and stuck in the 50s, basically. Uh, phone conferences work, um, Google Hangouts work. I've, I've I've been in we meetings with potential clients where I was the only one uh, in the room uh, physically, and and then uh, the sales guy would be on on uh, on a iPad on Skype or uh, on Google Hangouts, and 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 the and the client was like, okay, yeah, well he's in LA and uh, the other uh, senior p person is in uh, is in an airport in Australia, so that's how we roll. Okay, cool. Um, it, it sort of if if you don't dare break that barrier, because I mean that's that's our selling point. At least at least as a company, we are remote, uh, so we we are not around the corner. We don't have offices. We don't want offices. And if you think we're stupid, that's fine. That's your prerogative. But that's how we roll, uh, and that's our strength. There's a whole lot of things that are an advantage to it. Um, True. But it starts at the very first contact uh, with the company. I've, I lived just around the corner, so I, it wasn't a problem for me. But um, it, just do it. I mean, have that confidence to say if, if that's what you do. Uh, the, the, you can make uh, tons of excuses why not to do it. But we, we, we just determined, and you get that. We had looked from from a potential client in the beginning. Oh, okay, and then they get over it. And I want to say, after that meeting, the the head of development he came round and tapped me on the shoulder. You guys, you guys are so effing cool. I want to move all my development to remote, but I don't know how. But that's cool. Whoa. I was like, okay. And there was a sales pitch. So. I, I don't know, it's not conclusive. Again, we can talk in the corridors. Uh, I think we have uh, one, quest two questions left. Okay, I just don't know if you said it before, if I got it, but um, how many people are working for your company? How many Scrum teams and how many team members in the Scrum team? That would be interesting. I have no idea how many work for us right now. Well, okay. if I knew how to reject, basically we have a company of about 50 developers, okay. but we have like yeah. sub-teams. Uh, we have a particular team for each uh, client. Yeah. So there's one team uh, that's uh, Casper leads, okay. and they are uh, sort of you know, scrum driven. But we also have different teams that basically choose their own uh, solutions. Okay. So you can uh, basically imagine Slack as our own office, which is a fully virtual office. And mm -hmm. we do all kind of you know social uh, integrations and, and social activities either on Slack or we have those uh, monthly town halls where basically the whole operations team just, uh, you know, gives an update via, via Google Handouts to the whole community, mm -hmm. what has been you know, done uh, in the past month. Then we have those ex outputs where we like rent houses uh, all around the world where people can just buy in and leave for free yeah. if they choose to, you know, connect with, uh, with their team members. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I think that's a that's uh, very important thing to mention that we have about 50 developers mm -hmm. in the company, but they are divided into sub-teams. Okay. And, and okay. each team chooses their own 
uh, you know, a work style. And team leader, is it a scrum master or a PO? What is really, in scrum, there's not really a team leader, that's why I'm asking. Uh, oh, so no. it again depends on the on the on the team. We can either uh, build a team from scratch for clients, yeah. or we can merge with clients team, or we can like just um, uh, or, or or we can uh, give them a developer that basically join their team. So we can adapt to, to, uh, to the work style. So Casper is a team lead, um, uh, and he sort of manages the whole. Team, sub team, but mm -hmm. uh, then again, it, it depends on the other. What would you the call the yourself? Yeah. Would, you, would you call yourself a product owner or a scrum master? Oh, no, uh, none of those things. Okay. Uh, <laughs> project manager, team lead, uh, okay. jack of all trades, idiot. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a lot of names. It, it, it's just to find some kind of, of, of title that, that kind of explains. We work with uh, other vendors. At, at this particular project, which is kind of massive, um, so there needs there needs to be some some uh, personal um, liaison or yeah interfacing on on that level. I right, just a quick one. Do you think uh, your methodology or your organization would work in a corporate environment where not everybody would be allowed to work at night, or you know there are more strict uh, time and attendance windows, especially if the team is remote. That's really difficult to answer. I, I, I don't know. Um, it may, yeah, it's a blah. <laughs> uh, blah. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong, but... Right, Casper has this situation where he's spread across different time zones. If you reduce the number of time zones, then you would, you'd be doing the same thing, but just without the separation of time. So yes, absolutely, it could work, because that's what we do. So we have a team of 14 people who are separated by one time zone, so it's only an hour apart. So everyone can be in the same place at the same time in remote environments. What I'm saying is the opposite, when it's not in the same time zone. Then that's what gets me. Yes, but he, he works at night. Oh yeah. That's what I'm uh, saying. Well, yeah, like both at night and if there were more strict working windows, like if you work from nine to five, and you have ah. people in India and in South America, then you know, it, it synchronous communication becomes necessary, yeah, right? Yeah, but, but, but I, I, I don't see the point. I don't, I don't see the value. I, I, again. Over the last 20 years, I've seen a lot of different kind of developers. Some love to come in in the morning. They know exactly where the coffee maker is. Uh, the same colleagues, the same parking spot outside the offices. You know, that, that for me, incessant grind every day, day in, day out. It, 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 it makes me mad. You know, every day, wake up basically when you want, because you don't have to uh, set a clock. Uh, the day starts at 6. It doesn't. But for the client, it starts at six, and then you participate as much as you can during the night. And sometimes it it, it leads it, it spills over midnight. Um, I mean, if you want to do this, you you can't be hung up on 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 what time it is. I mean, you try to level it out. So let's say over a year, hopefully you get like eight hours a you day. You don't have kids yet. I have four kids. So how do you do that? That's well, that's I don't like birds and bees, it or it, it helps. I, I, we need well, to I talk later. <laughs> I also have four kids, and, and, and working from home in a remote environment allows me to be the full-time mum and the full-time employee. Um, I do it all. I can, all I time. can, I can give you an example. Uh, for many, many years, I, I, because I chose to live where I live, because I want to live there. It's very rural. But I love it, uh, the scout thing and all that. That's a whole different session. Um, so I had to commute a whole lot, and 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 I don't, I didn't wake up one day, but I, it was sort of a, a gliding movement again. So now I can't do this anymore. You know, I left in the morning. It was dark before my kids woke up. When I got home in the evening, it was dark, and my kids had gone to bed. I maybe saw them on weekends. Uh, and then trying to be a parent, 
for those few light hours uh, on a weekend. It was very bad. It, it wasn't quality time at all. And, I, and it sucked and I hated it. It was like, why do I have to go to this work so I can make all this money to pay for this house that I never see? I never see it. I don't see it. Maybe on a weekend. And for a car that I only use to drive to and from work. It was such a waste of time. And now, if I work 18 hours one day and two hours the next day, I don't, I don't care. That's, that's not the point of it. That's not the point of working remote for me. It may be, you may get a different answer from other remote workers, but it's, it's the freedom part that you can make things balance. And, 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 and my point is that there's actually also a, a process and project management uh, framework around it that, that, uh, that helps you a lot. But you have to be dedicated. You have to do it right. Not right, <laughs> but you have to do. You, you have to be committed to it. Do it fully. Don't don't just you know take a, a, a dive in the deep end. It will pay off. And it and it works. I I don't know any other remote companies that are so committed as our company, because. You hear us? Yeah, yeah, totally remote. Well, on our continent, because the time zone always gets people confused. And it's the, well, are you global? Or are you not global? Are you remote? Or are you not remote? Because otherwise, you're just kind of co-located. This is where I expect getting chairs thrown at me and rotten fruit. No, you're but right. that's that's you're what right. I feel. 100%. It has to be 100%. Yeah. Yep. Do it and commit to it. No. And 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 and. Be proud of it. Like, like if you want to be remote, be remote. And if the customers don't like it, then you have the wrong customers. That's a very bold statement. But that's yeah. that they will drag your work down. There's so many sessions that I've talked about. You have to, you have, have to also do work that is fun, and that has a purpose for you. Otherwise, you're just another little hamster in the wheel. <laughs> No chairs? I got through without no chairs. Thank you. <laughs>